Guizhou is a land in southwestern China filled with mystery and wonder. Today, we continue our exploration of the southeastern part of the province by heading down to Jiuzhou, an old gray town with a faded, glorious history. Jiuzhou sits in Huangping County, two hours' drive north of Kaili, the capital of southeastern Guizhou. As a water and land transport hub, Jiuzhou used to be a thriving business town. Much of its old architecture reflects the style of buildings from the lower reaches of the Yangtze River, thousands of miles away. These buildings are the legacies of successful business people who traveled from the far reaches of this vast country. Well, the business tradition continues today. Every four days, people from around the region will gather here and turn the old city into a supermarket. By supermarket, I mean about 20 to 30 thousand people will be here. Not only on this street, all the street around. It is one of the nine biggest local markets in the province. The Chinese Han and the Miao people live together in this area. Coming to this kind of market is a chance to see some of what their everyday lives are like. Here you can see people shop for their daily needs. You can also see the Miao people in their traditional dress. This regular event breathes life into the ancient town. The town is genuinely old. Its origins can be traced back more than 2,000 years. Today, most of its town walls are gone, but a number of old buildings still stand, testifying to its former prestige. In Wenchanggong, a temple dedicated to literary achievement, some old people gather to practice Tai Chi. The peacefulness of the old people reflects the mood of the ancient town. The old town blends Han and Miao culture with Western influences. Take the chance to visit the remains of the town's Catholic church. It's all dilapidated, but people still remember a French priest used to live here. It's said that when the communist Red Army tracked through the region, General Xiao Ke found a map in French in this church, which played a key role in directing the army's next move. In another old building, the Tianhou Gong, a former temple dedicated to the goddess of the sea, a group of old Miao women perform a traditional dance called the Small Stool Dance. It seems an unusual prop to use, but there must be some story behind it, just like the temple itself. Eight hundred meters north of the Jiuzhou town center is a very special plane. It was a military airfield financed by the Americans during the Second World War. The U.S. Air Force was stationed here for five months until the Japanese surrendered. Some people still remember seeing the field in full swing. Uh,就这样。飞机场停歇了。宽武崖的时候,美国的空军大队啊,就住在那一层船,就是还有美国街。都有的。啊,美国街,啊,两边街。啊,竟是临时帐篷。啊,临时帐篷,帆布的。啊
The locals are thinking of turning it back into an airfield again, so it can continue to play a role in modern Chinese history. Twenty minutes drive from Jiuzhou town, along an ancient communication route, is a little place called Flying Cloud Cliff. It used to be a postal house where people could stop over and take a rest. There is a temple inside, and the place is still the center of local festivals. The Kangpang is a quiet, restful spot that suits the needs of the tired traveler. It was not only a stopping point for ordinary people; some high-ranking Qing Dynasty officials have also stayed here. One of the most important Chinese philosophies is harmony between human beings and nature, and this pavilion is a very good example. The small pavilion was designed as part of the rocks. You have to climb through steps built in a cave to get to the second floor. It's a strange experience to open a window into the vast greenness of a quiet vista. This is called castro topography, typical in Guizhou Province. And does it look like clouds to you? Because the local people name it after it, the cloud cliff. There used to be a three-meter-tall statue, goddess of mercy, and local people would come and worship her in this natural temple. But when you come, what you really need to do is to look up. A huge cypress tree stands high on top of the rock cave. It's hard to imagine how such a tree could survive on hard stone. I was told the tree is more than 500 years old because there are records of it in old books. Near Jiuzhou, there live a special group of people. Anthropologists are yet to fit them into a category, but they call themselves the Gu family. You can see them perform in the Feiyun Valley at a rafting resort. The Gu family carries on the warrior spirit, and it's apparent in their costumes. The women look like they're wearing armor and helmets, but the most striking aspect is their headwear. It's like a sun with an arrow on it. The Gu family believe they are the descendants of Hou Yi, the legendary figure who shot down nine suns to save the world from being scorched. The girl's hair is arranged to commemorate this brave feat of their hero ancestor. In Flying Cloud Valley, the Gu people have also ritualized courtship in their own way. They've developed a dance that's both a performance and a game. It's a very interesting dance. The girl tries to hit her partner's back as the boy tries to step on her feet. All the messages and feelings are expressed in this way, aggressive and sweet at the same time.
From Kaili, we head further southeast to reach Rongjiang, where we are going to visit the Dong people, one of the other prominent ethnic groups in the region. The Miao people usually live in the mountain, but the Dong people tend to make their homes along rivers. Along the Zhuliujiang River in Rongjiang stand thousands of old banyan trees. They've stood here since the Qin Dynasty, protecting the riverbanks and the Dong villages. Many small Dong villages are scattered along the waterway. Their wooden houses have sloping roofs that form beautiful geometric designs. The Dong people have a reputation for being great singers, diligent farmers, and able fishermen. After a day's work in the field, people generally head home and sit at home in a group they call Xinge Zuo Yue. I understand it meaning singing songs while waiting for the moon to rise. Women continue doing things around the house like spinning or embroidering, all the soft work that's up to the females. As they sing along, men play traditional instruments. I got the feeling that the rhythm of their songs keeps pace with the speed of their busy hands and feet. I'm sure the monotonous work is much less tiring this way, and it's become a